Hi everybody, it's Carlin from The Real Outdoor Experience. Thanks for tuning in to this really, really short video on chaga mushrooms. Just uh, clean back from a hunt in Northern Ontario for moose. You can tell I got a bit of the scrub going here, but I wanted to explain uh, how I process chaga. I'm not gonna go into all of the benefits that chaga has and will give you. There's a lot of websites out there, a lot of uh, YouTube videos out there that can do so much more of that than I can. Okay, so what I have here is three different size pieces of chaga. Now you can see that the inside of this one is a really nice golden uh, dark hue. And uh, same with this one. These ones are a little bit older than the one than this one here. This one just came off a tree and it's actually still damp and somewhat pliable. So the first thing that I do is I take a look at the chaga. This one, uh, because they grow on birch trees, I have uh, a bunch of birch bark here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean that off. Uh, because this one is so dry and uh, all this stuff will come off real, uh, real easy, I just took a steel brush and just brushed off some of the birch bark and uh, some of the other impurities. Now, I used to, before I knew better, take all this black stuff off, but you wanna take this black stuff and put it into your pot or whatever as well, whatever you're holding it with, because that stuff processes down as well and it's, and it's all part of the chaga mushrooms, good for you. So we finished processing our uh, chaga, taking all the bark off, getting all the nasties and the little impurities off the outsides. One thing I will tell you is that when it's wet, when it's fresh right off the tree, way easier to process. I'm gonna show you that right up next. Okay, so when it's wet, you can actually even take a utility knife like an Ofla here and just easily chip pieces off. The only downfall to this is it is wet and I am gonna to have to dry it, but that's okay, not a big deal. Okay, so that's one method. The other one that I have to use for the dry stuff is a, is a little hatchet. So, and all I do is I take it and just chop pieces off, but as you can see, they're flying everywhere. So you wanna just take, take it easy and try and do the best you can without making a huge mess. So that's what chaga looks like on the inside when it's nice and fresh, and when it dries, it's a little bit of a darker yellow hue. Okay, this is what we're looking for here. This is the end stage, so it's been uh, processed, it's been uh, ground, and then it's been dried. So this is the chaga that I put in my tea or in my coffee, and uh, this is what you eventually want to get to, just like that. Looks exactly like a golden brown coffee grind. There's two different methods that I use to process the chaga down to a coffee grind consistency. One is a, a blender, just uh, simply throw the chunks in the blender like this and uh, chop it up. The other is to use an old hand-powered meat grinder. Okay, so what I have here is a little package of goodness and I'll show you how to make that. This is how I make chaga tea. I use a tea ball, very simple. You can certainly do this with the dried chaga. This is, uh, I still have to dry this stuff yet, but you can certainly do that with your tea ball and put it in your cup. But this stuff is so fine that you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, some fine grinds in your tea. So, to combat that, what I do is I put a teaspoon in a coffee filter, or a little bit more. Just take it, and I roll it all up into a little ball. Give it a twist, and I put it inside my tea ball, because I don't like all the grinds. Now that's not gonna open up. So what you're left with is a little bit of a package with chaga inside a coffee filter, and that is clamped down by your tea ball. Now this package here is good for about three or so cups of tea, or until it starts to lose any kind of shade of brown in your water. One last step before we get to the tea part is the drying out. So simply just take a cookie up. sheet and put a thin layer of chaga dust grind on it. Uh, I use the convection feature in my oven. Just roast it until you get a nice dry finish on the, on the chaga and then I store it in an airtight container. It lasts for a very, very long time. There are so many health benefits to chaga, it, there's just too many to mention. Do your research as always. Be comfortable with the stuff that you find in the woods yourself. Thanks from Connor and Carlin from The Real Outdoor Experience. And as always, keep it real. Thanks and take care for now, folks. Happy chaga hunting.